Welcome to They Paid What? Where I hope to help you never pay full price for home decor that you love. Whether you are watching me on Craft Around the Clock TV, on YouTube, or on my Facebook page, The Honeysuckle Haven, I am so glad that you have joined me. So welcome to the first episode of They Paid What? I'm super excited about this project tonight. If you guys are out there watching tonight, uh, say hello in the comments and let me know that you're there. I'm going to um, be recreating some high-end decor for a fraction of the price. So I'm super excited about this series and I hope you are too. I see some people out there. Hello, hello everyone. So we are going to recreate a... Um, it's a McKinsey Childs inspired, no, it's inspired, <laughs> so it's not going to be exact, um, rooster. And uh, so I hope you guys all like roosters tonight. If you don't, at least it'll give you, maybe get you thinking about how you can recreate something that you love, that you see. Hello, hello everyone. Thank you for joining me tonight. I'm so glad you're here tonight. So um, roosters, there's lots of um, roosters. If you go to resale shops, if you go to um, oh, antique places, I even just put a message out on Facebook to some Facebook friends and to see if anyone had a rooster that they wanted to sell or get rid of. And I had a crafting friend that she had this rooster here that, well, she had two that she wanted to get rid of. So um, that was very sweet of her to let me have one of the, a couple of those. And then I went to a resale shop here in town and I found two little roosters like this. And then I went to another, so I went to several resale shops and I found another rooster. So I um, already did made one up for you tonight. So we have a big one that matches the high-end piece that I am trying to imitate tonight so I will show you that at the end of the video so if you stick with me you can see the full sized one um, what it looks like and how I did you can let me know how close I got um, but for video purposes tonight I get 45 minutes so we are going to do the little one I'm going to go through the process with you so just so you can see how I did it it takes way longer than 45 minutes so I'll have to be honest to paint um, all the details on the bigger one. So we are going to recreate um, the uh, full-size one on this little miniature, just so you can see how I did it. Hope that makes sense to everyone. So and these are super cute. So then I'm going to have little ones too. So I'm super excited about that. Thank you, ladies, for joining. I see lots of people. I'm so excited to watch. Oh, yay. I found one when I emptied out my brother's house. Oh, good. So if you liked that high-end piece that I posted a picture of, I hope you guys all saw it. If you did not, go to the Honeysuckle Haven and you'll see my latest post. And it has a picture of the high-end piece that I am um, imitating. It's inspired. Inspired is the key word here. <laughs> so we're going to get started tonight. I'm going to use the small ones just so I can walk you through the process of exactly what I did so that if you want to recreate it on a big rooster, a small rooster, you could do it on any size that you have. I will probably, I will end up doing this one later. So I'm going to go ahead and set this one aside just so I don't knock it off my table. And then I have a little more room here. So we're going to use some Waverly chalk paint tonight because chalk paint sticks to anything and we need it to stick to the ceramic and such a slick, shiny material, or yeah, I guess is what you would call it. So we're gonna use that tonight. So chalk paint, and we need lots of paint brushes. Look at this, Whew. The dried stuff in the lid is going everywhere. Now I need, I did not grab a really big brush. I guess we'll use this one, this one will work. And I'm going to use a popsicle stick and just scoop out some of my chalk paint. I was trying to decide the best way to do this tonight because it is kind of a lengthy process because you have to paint it in stages. And 45 minutes is not a lot of time when you have several stages that you have to do. So I was so happy when I found these little roosters because I thought, oh, that'll be perfect. I can show you on the little one. Just what I did. Okay, so we are going to paint the entire thing white. 
And um, my original, the piece that I am using as my inspiration, they had a painted face, and I forgot. I want to start with that. So this burgundy color is up here, and the burgundy wattle, but then the face was painted as well. It was kind of all the same reddish or burgundy-ish color. So I'm going to go ahead. I have some apple barrel. I'm thinking, do I want to do that now? I do. Apple Barrel Tuscan Red, so it's a darker red, and I'm just going to go ahead and paint the face and get that done. And then we'll paint the rest of it white. So we have a nice blank slate to start with. Let's see, let's get a brush that, that one might be a little big. <laughs> I don't want to use my brushes that I have up here that I'm going to use for the black and white. Okay, so I just looked at, what I did was I looked at my um, inspiration piece. I had a picture pulled up on my phone because I wasn't using my phone for a video. And I um, just kept looking at where the details were on it. And so the face, it, I'm gonna, there's a little curved spot here and you kind of work with what you have on your piece. Not all the pieces are going to be exactly the same because you have different feather lines, you have different wing directions and feather directions. You're just going to make it inspired. It's going to be close. So I'm going to use, there's a little rounded piece here. So I'm going to paint, go ahead and paint that with the red color because my inspiration piece had a pretty good sized red face. And I'm going to paint right over the eye and then just kind of round his face out. And it does not, if you don't like the way it looks, you can wipe it off before it dries and start again. So see how I did that? Here's what it looked like, that side. And then I just painted a little red on there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. And when you're painting, it helps to have your hands steadied. Like if I try to just hold it like this, my hand's gonna shake. So even if I'm like holding my rooster up, if I steady my pinky on the rooster, it just helps steady your hand. So I'm stick, I just stick my pinky right up there on the, um, the comb at the top. I had to look up all the parts of a rooster so I would know what I was talking about tonight. <laughs> the waddle and the comb is at the top. The waddle's down here under his beak. I always forget what all those little parts are called. So then I'm just going to round out his face again a little bit and then cover up the eye. We'll paint brand new eye on there. And you can paint the um, beak if you want a different, a brighter orange depending on what yours looks like. And then I'm just going to take this red color and kind of brush it into the waddle that's already there just to tie these together. I'm not going to worry about covering it completely. And then a little bit, we're just going to brush a little bit on the comb at the top. Just like that. He already looks better. Look at that. So cute. <laughs> Where did I get my rooster? Linda, these little ones came from um, a resale shop here in town called Karen's Corner. We're going to dry it just a little bit here so then we can paint our white on it. Now I'm not going to take you through the entire painting process tonight because he wants to sit here and watch me paint the whole time. <laughs> but I want to show you how I got to my end result if you stick with me. At the end of the video, you'll see a big rooster that I found at a resale shop, and I went ahead and painted it and got it all done. Now, so I had my face painted on. Now I'm going to paint the rest, the whole rooster, because this one doesn't have feet. The inspiration piece had feet on it. This one doesn't, so I'm just going to paint the rest of it white. So I'm going to go over it all with white, and I have my white Waverly chalk paint. And then you just go gently, carefully around what you just painted. And if you get a little bit on there, nobody's going to know but you. And you just 
paint the whole thing white. Then it's going to give you a nice clean slate. So we're going to do that real quick. I need a little bit skinnier brush up here around. I'm glad I brought all these brushes in here. Let's see. I was looking all over for you. Finally found you. Oh, good. Yay, you found me. So, yes, you can find me on the Honeysuckle Haven. Craft Around the Clock TV is another page where we are doing these special series um, shows, events, or episodes every week. So we have, a, I think we have five of them possibly going or will be going here soon. So you can catch reoccurring for at least six weeks episodes of some kind of a fun thing like I'm doing, like They Paid What, where we recreate high-end decor for a fraction of the price. So you, you can catch me for the next few Tuesdays, several Tuesdays. And then we are going to be, and we're on YouTube as well. Okay, so this part is a little tedious. And then if you just, if you get it on there, you just take your fingernail and scrape it off. It's okay. When I'm all done, we seal it up. And I'll show you, oh my, I just about got paint on my Craft Around the Clock TV t-shirt from Miss Tracy. <laughs> that would not be good. These shirts are so cute she had made for us. And the colors. Let's get that before it gets on me. Okay, I'm getting this, de this part real quick. This detail part is um, a little tedious and then it won't take me long to hurry up and brush a coat of paint on the rest. I just want to take my time around these corners here just to make sure it's not too sloppy. When you're doing this on your own uh, at home, you of course take as long as you want. You don't have to hurry about a, worry about a time. And do you see how I have my pinky resting on my rooster? That helps steady my hand. If it's setting on the table, this one's a little small, so it's a little easier for me to hold it up. But if you have a big rooster, of course, you just have your hand steadied on the table or on the rooster itself. Okay, there. So I got all that tedious stuff done. Now we can brush on some paint. We're just gonna put the white paint all over. And you want a nice, bright, clean slate. Especially this inspiration piece, there was a lot of white. Um, on it. So you get a good base coat of white all the way around. Now you guys, if you have questions, throw those questions out there and I will do my best to answer what I can. This one's not too, this project this week's not too involved where there's probably too many questions, but if you have them, throw them out and I will answer what I can. Also, if you would like, if you see a piece of um, home decor, high-end decor that you love, but you do not like the price, send me a picture. Send me those pictures. I have several people that have sent me pictures, and I um, keep them and want your uh, piece might get picked one of these weeks. I just keep the picture. I add them all to my page, and then... I have a little bank of high-end pieces that you guys like, something that you might want to see recreated for a fraction of the price. That's the best part. Now, it's not going to, of course, have that name tied to it, but I'm not really a name brand person anyways. If you, uh, my friend Gina can attest to that, she, she always throws out these name brands. I'm like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> There's a few that I know, but I'm just not a big name brand person. So I'm totally okay with having a inspired piece. Get the same look for a fraction of the cost. Let's see. I couldn't believe the price of the original. I know, $300. <laughs> Crazy, $300. So these little roosters, I got two of them. Um, trying to think, they were 
I want to say like three dollars a piece at the resale shop so three bucks a piece and then um, my one rooster I showed you at the beginning of the video from one of my friends out there crafting friends she uh, was she wanted to just give it to me She's super sweet she did not want to take any money I didn't give her I gave her a little bit I said I feel so bad what if I repaint it and uh, <laughs> then end up selling it or <laughs> get rid of, getting rid of it so but she just wanted to get, donate it to me super sweet so that one was five because she gave me two so it was five a piece um, and then my rooster that I recreated that I have a picture here or I have it to show you at the end of the video was $17 so still, 17 versus 300, you can't beat it <laughs> to get the same look. Okay, let's get just a little more on the front here. All right, so we have our, whoops, I need to get back in the video, in this view of the camera. We're going to dry it. Let's see if I see some comments out there. You're not in your craft room. No, I thought I would change scenery since I'm just painting tonight. Change background. Hanson puts a special series. Just switch it up a little bit. I'm actually in my uh, kitchen in the corner of my, my dining room tables right there. My kitchen's over there. <laughs> and I ran everybody off. <laughs> my Well, my husband, he left to go to his um, mom and dad's place for a little bit and then my daughter's coaching and then my son I ran him off to his bedroom <laughs> with the dogs oh thank you for those stars thank you thank you we're just going to do real quick one more coat now I don't have to worry about the whole thing being completely white because I am going to paint a lot of black on here as well so we're just going to real quick put one more coat on there if you guys don't mind, I'll see. I see a couple spots that I might have to touch up. And I might need to just dry it just a smidge longer. Um, I got a little uh, carried away. This chalk paint, if you don't dry it completely, it'll wipe itself off when you go to put more paint on there. Where did you get the rooster? Karen's Corner, it's a local resale shop here where I live. Are you doing dry brush? I am just dipping it in the paint and brushing it right on. Yeah, throw those questions out there. If you have questions, I'll try to catch what I can. I'm gonna get this good and dry. Okay. And then we're gonna get a little more paint on there. And then I'll show you the process of how I recreated the design on the rooster. to make it look similar to our inspired piece. Now the last time I did this, it was pretty close to um, the inspired piece. I made the little round French country tote. That one was super cute and it was pretty close. This one is close but not exact because you just, it's hard to find, if you saw the picture that I posted, the feathers just stuck out everywhere. That's That was hard to find. Okay, get a little more on there. Now, like I said, I am not gonna go through the whole painting, so don't worry. If you're just joining me and you're like, she is just sitting here painting, I'm not doing the whole thing. Just gonna walk you through the first steps and then you'll see. I'll just do part of it and then show you the end result. So stick with me and you can see the big rooster that I painted to look like the inspired piece. I need a little piece of this because my nose is kind of running just a little. Get rid of that. We went uh, summertime, so it's so nice. I went to my friends and we hung out, my daughter and I hung out with her and her daughter for a while in their pool today. So that was super relaxing and fun. Got a little sun today. Thank you, thank you, I saw that. 
spreading. The honeysuckle is what we say here on the honeysuckle haven. <laughs> All right, I am almost done. Let's get this back part of the rooster. And I'll go back, because I'm not doing the whole rooster right now, I'll go back and get the details and clean it up a little bit more when I'm all done with the video. You guys just so you get the idea here of what we did. Okay, make sure you can see that little rooster. Let's move this so he stands out a little bit more. On that white, he was kind of blending in. Let's see, are you watching your, oh, I can't, I, I missed it. Hello, Denise. Hello, Teresa. Thanks for joining. Thanks, ladies. Okay, we're going to dry it pretty good here. Get this blank canvas nice and dry. And then this next part is the fun step. Oh, there's my friend Jen out there. Okay, so I took my rooster, painted his face, and then I painted the rest of them white. So I have a nice blank canvas here to start with. Now I'm gonna take a pencil. So just a regular, oh, this is a mechanical pencil. And this, I'm gonna start drawing out the details. And I know that that might sound a little scary, but it's not hard at all. I used my inspiration piece, the picture. So if you did not see that, go to my page and check out that piece. I'll um, add it to the video, the thumbnail of the video when I'm done so you can see. But I just um, looked at the picture and looked at the details. And there was this part right here. I looked it up. It's called the neck of it. It's called the hackles. So the hackles was black and it kind of came down and I'm using the lines that are on my rooster. There's already indentions. So there's a curved spot in the front and I'll show you. Can you see that? I just took my pencil and drew right in that little indention of that curved spot. So I'm using the lines that I have. And that's why I said where it's not going to be exact, it's just going to be inspired. Where am I going to display the roosters? Wanda, I'm not sure. And then the, it curves around. And I have, I already did one of the little roosters. I don't have my inspiration piece in front of me to look at. I just have this little one. So I'm looking at it, if you see me looking down. And then the black kind of came onto the wings a little bit. So there's some little curves on here that I'm just following those curves of what I already have on my rooster. And I'll show you. Get up there nice and close. Now if the comments are in your way, swipe them to the right and they'll go away so you can see what I'm doing. So I just traced around those lines and then um, I repeat it on the other side here. So we're going to go, let's see, let me flip my little rooster around here. And I don't want to show you yet. <laughs> I want you to stick with me and I'll show you. I have a little one that's done and then a big one that's finished. So you can see how cute they are. They are adorable. And then go around these lines. I'm just following what I have. Okay, so I drew that one around just like that. Now this top part up here, the um, hackles is what they called it around the neck here is was black on the inspiration piece. So I just put, you can put a B on there or you could put a dot so you know that you're painting that. Just mark it somehow. So I'm just gonna put a B on there so I know I'm painting that part. And then there was on the tail feathers, there was a big section of white right at the base of the tail feathers. So I have some feathers down here that are kind of by themselves at the base of the tail. So I'm just gonna trace around those and we're gonna leave those white. So I'm not gonna write anything on those so I know that those are staying white. You just trace, and that's where this chalk paint is nice. It gives you nice dry surface 
to just draw on with your pencil. If you don't like it, you erase it. Like right here, I went over that feather a little bit. So I just take my pencil and erase it off of there. So there, I traced around. Can you see at the base of the tail where I traced around that? That part's gonna stay white. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so then I'm thinking of the details of, that they had. They had this part down here, the wing was white, but then they had some little black feathers that were mixed underneath. So we're gonna draw those in. And I don't really have anything to work with down here, so I am just drawing in. There were like three pointy little feathers, just like that, on the inspiration piece. So like I said, it doesn't have to be exact. We're just getting it kind of close. You're getting the same look for a fraction of the price. So I did the same thing on the bottom of that one. Now, the tail feathers were the pretty part. They were black, and then some of them were that black and white, that McKinsey Child's black and white check that some people just love. Um, this is where we draw in the check. So I'm gonna label some of them black, and I kind of alternated. I did a black feather, then I did a check feather, then I did a black feather, then a check feather. Thank you, thank you for those stars. Thank you, I appreciate it. So I know the main tail feather on my inspiration piece was black. So we're gonna put a B or a dot on there, either one, whichever one you wanna do, so you remember what color you're painting that. And then the next one's gonna be check. So depending on how wide your feather is, is how many checks you're gonna do. This one's pretty skinny, so I'm just gonna draw a line right down the middle of the feather and then draw across all the way up down the feather and make it, actually we're gonna do both of these check together here. And so right next to each other and they kind of come down to the same spot. I'll show you that, what that looks like. Don't want to drop it. See how I put those checks on there? Whoops, let's turn it. You just draw it right on. And then what I did was I put a dot in all the ones that I'm going to color black. So you want to alternate. You want to make it check. So dot, and then the one above it's white. And then I come over and make a dot, and I'm alternating them. That way when I go to paint it, it is way easier because it's already marked for you. I'll show you that, just like that. Then I know which ones are what color. Yes, so when we're done, who just said that? Uh, Lou, yes, I will show you the one, my piece that I, I painted that's finished that's all shiny and glazed and finished. Getting a bit complicated. Oh, I'm sorry, Nancy. So you just draw your check, like a checkerboard is all you do on one of your feathers. So you just draw your checkerboard pattern and then you just alternate which ones you're gonna color black or white. It really, if you're doing it, it's not that hard. It might sound a little um, confusing as I'm explaining it. So then my next feather is gonna be black and then the next one's check. So black, check, black, check is what we did. And then just draw a straight line down the middle and then draw my cross, draw my lines across to make it like a tic-tac-toe board or a checkerboard. And then I just label which ones I'm painting. Just like that. And that's why I'm doing the on the little piece because um, the big piece takes way too long. And like I said, if you stick with me, I'm not doing this whole rooster. I'm showing you the process of how I got to the finished piece. So this one right here is gonna be a check. And real quick, I'll just label them all. And then this one will be black, and this one's a check. And then the bottom one down here, we'll go ahead since we're alternating. We'll make this, we'll label this one a check. So I did that on my tail feathers. Now, the other place on the inspiration piece was the breast here was checkered. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna draw a checkerboard on the front. 
really easy. Thank you, thank you for those stars. Thank you. Um, so let's see. I want to, I'm using the lines that are here and just outline just the breast of the rooster. And that's gonna be checkerboard. Really easy, draw your vertical lines down and you can make them as wide as you want. This part's easier than the feathers because you have a little bit bigger surface to work with. Just like that. So I just made it right there on the breast of the rooster. And then I'm going to go back up here and every other one I'm putting a dot in it. Just alternating them. I'll show you what that looks like. There it is. So then I know which ones, the ones with the dot are getting painted black and the other ones are white. Sure, going to save this and try it. Oh good, Teresa, I hope you do. It really is not that bad. It's just a little time consuming. I love to do this for my mom. Oh, and then all these um, roosters that are kind of outdated, you know, that we rooster decor, some of them, some of them are still really cute. I love roosters. But if you have an outdated one that you don't use or you see one in a resale shop, uh, you can do this and it's so cute. Okay, we're almost done. I'm just gonna paint a couple of the little checks for you and then I will show you the finished piece. I'm gonna get some, same of my Waverly white. No, not Waverly white. We're doing the Waverly chalk paint in ink in the black color. And I'm just gonna scoop a little bit out onto my plate. And then the rest of the rooster is all just painting the checks and the black part, that's it. So I'm gonna take, let's go ahead and paint the hackles real quick, black, get that started, and then I'll do just a little bit of the check. Then you can kind of get an idea of what he's gonna look like. So you, now the um, black chalk paint over the white chalk paint covers really nicely. I only had to do one coat and then just a little touch up coat. And you can see I have a B right here and a B right here. So I know this whole area I'm painting with this black color. So it's nice, you already have it labeled. Now if you mess up, I did mess up on one of the feathers on mine and I had to paint, repaint it white. It was not a big deal at all. I just went right over it with the white paint and started over. See how good that covers, how nice. Easy, so easy with this chalk paint. You are great at explaining the process. Oh, good, thank you. I hope so. Because it really is not bad at all. It was kind of fun, actually. I love this series because I love the challenge. I love it of seeing a piece, a high end piece, that just the price is kind of crazy <laughs> and seeing if I can recreate it. It is so fun. I like to be challenged. And you can do the same at home. Just give it a try. You see something that you like and you do not want to spend what it says on that price tag. See if what you can come up with. You'd be surprised when you start thinking that way. You just, you just, uh, it gets easier and easier the more you do it. Thinking outside the box, what can I use to recreate that? It is so fun. Okay, so I'm not gonna paint the whole thing black. I promised you guys that you would not have to sit here and watch me paint the whole thing. So we're just gonna get just around his face. And then we'll do a couple of the little checks. And then I'll show you my rooster that I'm so excited that I love. He's super cute. So cute. Okay. There we go. So you just continue painting all that part. See how I went around the curves there that I drew with my pencil. And I don't know if you noticed, I had my hand resting on my tail feathers the whole time. That keeps your hand steady if you keep it rested on something. Hello, hello, Pam and Audrey. Thank you for joining. Okay, so now for the checks. I found it's good to have 
a pointy little tiny brush, a pointy one for the corners because the corners are a little tricky to get those corners nice and sharp. And then you need some kind of a brush that's squared, squared off. Now these checks are really little, so I have little bitty ones. I would use a bigger one. Oh, here's a good one. On the bigger rooster, see how that one's nice and squared off at the top? You want to use one like that for the bigger checks. But since this little rooster, he's so tiny, let's paint just a couple of the little checks on his breast here. So I'm using my little fine brush to start the corners. And I'm just doing all four corners. And then I fill it in with my other brush. And like I said, when you, um, whoops, I'm sticking my finger in the paint. When you start get, doing this, if you mess up a little bit, just paint over it white. You won't even, nobody will even know. Or you'd be surprised when you paint these checks, you don't even see because it's kind of busy. You don't even see that if there's a mistake. Your eye does not go to it. So they're pretty forgiving. So I painted my corner. See, this part's time consuming. That's why we're not doing the big rooster right now. Painted that little check. And then we come down here. I'm gonna try it with just the little squared off brush on these little ones. Oh, it's not too bad. It's a little faster. Look at that. I'll do a couple more here, just so you can see. As it comes to life, it's so fun. I was painting it, and when I got did the white, my family's like, that nah, does not look very good. And then as I did another layer, they're like, oh, I can see where you're going with this. <laughs> it's getting a little closer. It starts coming to life. If I missed any of your questions, I'll go back and um, answer any questions tonight that you may have had. So if you like these roosters, this inspiration piece, start looking at your resale, local resale shops or put a message out there on Facebook. You will find somebody, I'm sure, that wants to get rid of one. Okay, so you can see what that was gonna look like if I continue painting that check all the way on the front and then on the feathers. Let's see how much time we have. We are good. Oh, let's do just a little bit on the feather and then you can see, so you can see the whole thing come to life a little bit. Now, if you get too much paint caked on your brush, I'll just wipe it all off and flatten my brush out nice and squared off again and start over because it does want to get caked on there. So you want to clean it off every once in a while and start over with a nice flat, clean brush. Okay. So you can kind of see, see how the check on the tail, how cute is that gonna be? Can you kind of see it's starting to come to life a little bit? It's starting to look like the inspiration piece. Let's see, have you seen, I have Maria. She does this style all the time. She does amazing high-end looking pieces. Okay, so let's show you my other little one. Now, after I painted all the parts on here that I drew out with my pencil, I see where you're going with this, Nancy. Thank you. Good. Yeah, you can see how it's going to work. Um, I let it dry overnight, and then the next day I took, because the inspiration piece was nice and shiny, the whole thing was shiny, I bought Krylon. It's a triple thick crystal clear glaze, and it's really easy to use. I just took it outside, put it in a box, my rooster in a box, and sprayed it down with a coat of glaze. Now you might want to put two coats on there if you want a nice, real thick, shiny um, appearance to your rooster. So if you want to screenshot that, you could do that. So this was from Walmart. I just got it at Walmart in the paint section. Oh, thank you, Teresa. Okay, so I'm going to show you the little one. Look how cute this little rooster is. Here he is. Look, oh, so cute, so cute. I think he turned out adorable. He looks similar, not exactly like the inspiration piece, 
but very similar. Same look for, this was $3. $3 for this little rooster and then your paint. And you know, if you don't have paint, it's gonna cost you a little bit for that, but yeah, way less than the price tag that was on it. So there's the little one. And then I have the big one to show you too. Isn't he cute? So I'll finish painting this one to match. Never know, these might end up in my shop. <laughs> so if you like these, you might be watching for these when I'm all done with them. Okay, now the big one, like I said, the roosters are not going to be exactly, you just, that rooster, that inspiration piece, he was kind of wide and squatty and he had big tail feathers that were all spread out, but I found this one at a resale shop that had bigger tail feathers, um, but it did have a base on it. So the uh, inspiration piece did not have a base. It just had feet. And so I was like, what am I gonna do with the base? So I looked up the brand and they use a lot of, which I knew this, they use a lot of gold. So I painted my base gold, just so it kind of matches the inspiration piece or that inspiration style, I should say. So here's my big one. Whoops, I hit my uh, mic, I'm so sorry. But look how cute. See how his tail feathers are a little bit bigger? His head isn't turned quite as much as the inspiration piece, but he does have a little more spread out feathers. He had that big breast up here and the, um, what was this called, hackles here were nice and defined for me. This was at a resale shop, $17. And then I buy the can for a clear glaze for around three bucks, so $20. I recreated this piece versus 300 for what was on the price tag. So you can't beat that. And then I painted the base gold. If you don't like gold, you don't have to do the gold. But I'll turn them around so you can see. Look how cute. So cute, so cute. Oh no, I was frozen. Oh, I hope, I hope it's not frozen now so you can see this piece. It <laughs> froze right at the end, wouldn't you know it. <laughs> turn them all the way around so you can see. Look at that, so cute. And if you missed the beginning, you can go back and see the process of how I got to this. He is adorable. And $20, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. So let's see what time we have. Oh, good. Just in time. Four minutes. Next week, I'm going to be on again um, another episode of They Paid What at 8 o'clock Central Time. Um, you can catch me on Craft Around the Clock TV, The Honeysuckle Haven, or on YouTube. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it inspires you to think outside the box, recreate decor that you love for a fraction of the price. I thank you for joining me, and I will see you all next time. Have a good night. Bye.